Ever wondered about the exotic beauty of Caribbean islands? Have you ever heard of the San Blas Island and the Kuna people who live there? Well, in today's Word Power episode from English Plus Podcast, we will talk about the Kuna people, but not exactly about the people, but about something very specific that is a Kuna creation. And to be more specific, we're going to talk about their molas, the mola cloths. That's coming in today's Word Power episode. And of course, because it is a Word Power episode, so you know that we're going to talk about 10 new words in context. First, we're going to talk about the story. Then we're going to talk about these words in context. I'm going to ask you some questions. You're going to pause the episode to answer the questions yourselves. And then I'm going to discuss the meanings of the words with you. So how exciting can that be in a new Word Power episode from English Plus Podcast? This is your host, Danny. Welcome to the show. So before we start with today's episode, I would like to remind you that you can practice everything you're going to learn in this episode on the website EnglishPlusPodcast.com. The link is in the show notes. It will take you to the custom post I created for this episode where you will find two different types of exercises. For those of you who prefer to do everything online, I got you covered. You have interactive activities that you can practice on the website without having to leave the website. Of course, whether on your computer, mobile phone, whatever device you have. And for those of you who prefer pen and paper, I also got you covered because there is the PDF practice worksheet that you can download, print out, and practice not only the words you're going to learn in today's episode, but also you can practice the previous four episodes in this PDF practice worksheet. So with that being said, we shouldn't be wasting any more time and we should start talking about the Kuna creations. But to give you a little heads up, let me tell you about the words we're going to focus on today so that you notice them when you hear them in context for the first time. But don't worry about the meaning. We'll get there. We'll have plenty of time to talk about the meaning. So the words are denizen, exotic, complementary, paramount, stylized, invest, exemplify, dichotomy, pragmatic, and replica. And now, without further ado, let's start talking about the Kuna creations. Of the hundreds of San Blas islands that dot the Caribbean coast of Panama, only 50 are inhabited, primarily by the Kuna people. The chief claim to fame of the denizens of these islands lies with the women. Travelogues, leisure magazines, and movies often feature their dazzling, exotic beauty, complete with nose rings and beaded ankles and wrists. If the Kuna women are their society's ambassadors to the world, then the mola cloths that they create and wear are their flags. Molas are vibrantly colored, intricately patterned, hand-stitched cloth panels. Kuna women who learn the complex process from their mothers first stack anywhere from two to seven layers of different colored cloth. Then they cut designs into the top layer and sew the design's edges with complementary stitchery. Smaller, similar designs are cut into the succeeding layers, exposing each level of color. The final panels are often so thick that they resemble sculptural forms. The paramount theme represented in Mola design is nature. The earliest examples were abstract interpretations of the texture of brain coral, but the designs have become increasingly complex, stylized images of animals and plants. Although folk art experts have attempted to invest the patterns with religious symbolism, the designs are probably purely decorative. Each mola is unique, even when a motif is repeated. The final panel, blouse, purse, or pillow shows differences in color and form. While they may appear ancient in concept, molas actually emerged in the latter half of the 19th century. Until missionaries and traders visited the San Blas Islands, Kuna women had painted their bodies. In order to conform to visitors' expectations, they transferred the bright designs to the machine-manufactured cloth that the traders brought and entered the modern world wearing molas. The word itself actually means cloth. The evolution of the mola exemplifies a necessary dichotomy for the Kuna adopting new ways to survive in the modern world while at the same time keeping their culture intact. 
The Kuna women initially made their molas for pragmatic reasons, without a thought to selling them. However, when traders offered to buy them, the women gladly accepted the money, returning to sewing and abandoning other duties that they had previously shared with the men. Today, the women's cottage industry brings substantial income into an economy formerly based on coconuts and helps pay for schools, water systems, and electrical generators. This dramatic, colorful needlework is found nowhere else in the world, and it is unlikely that replicas will ever be successfully made by machine. While molas are widely sought as works of art, they remain essential to the Kuna women's traditional dress and their way of life. So, that was our story about Kuna creations. I hope you learned something new today, or even if you've heard of those molas, or if you've seen them, or even if you have them, maybe you didn't know all these things about the molas and about the Kuna women and the Kuna people in general. And now, of course, we will move to the word power part, and we will talk about 10 words. I already told you about the 10 words. Let's hear them again. These words are denizen, exotic, complementary, paramount, stylized, invest, exemplify, dichotomy, pragmatic, and replica. We're going to start with the very first word, denizen. That's coming next. Don't go anywhere. Remember, I'm going to ask you the question, give you some time to think about it, and then I will be talking a little more about the word. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. So our very first is denizen. D-E-N-I-Z-E-N. Denizen. First, let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said the chief claim to fame of the denizens of these islands lies with the women, travelogues, leisure magazines, and movies often feature their dazzling, exotic beauty, complete with nose rings and beaded ankles and wrists. So here we're talking about the fame of the denizens of these islands. What do we mean by that? Denizens can be best explained as remnants, as inhabitants, public buildings, or mythological gods. Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought inhabitants is the answer, you're absolutely right. A denizen of a particular place is a person, animal, or plant that lives or grows in this place. So we're simply talking about inhabitants, residents, or citizens. You see, denizen is very close to citizen, which is very close in meaning, of course, or simply occupant of the place. And remember, we can use it for people, animals, or plants, not only for people like we used it in our context. We can use it for any kind of animal, people, or plant that lives or grows in a place, we call them denizens. So that was our first word, and I hope you all got it right. But don't worry, if you don't get it right, now definitely you will get it right. And you have a lot of practice on the website. Don't forget that. The link is just in the show notes. Take the link and practice, but not before you finish listening to the podcast episode first, right? Now we'll move on and talk about the next word, which is exotic. E-X-O-T-I-C, exotic. Let's take a look at how we used it in context first, and then I will ask you the question. The chief claim to fame of the denizens of these islands lies with the women, travelogues, leisure magazines, and movies often feature their dazzling, exotic beauty, complete with nose rings and beaded ankles and wrists. So exotic beauty. Now for the question. Which word or words do you think could best replace exotic in this context? Can we replace it with made up of extinct elements, exhausted, devoid of emotion, or intriguingly different? What do you think? Which is the correct answer? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought intriguingly different is the answer, you're absolutely right. We're talking about exotic beauty here. Something that is exotic is unusual and interesting, usually because it comes from or is related to a distant country that we don't usually see a lot of, except in movies or maybe in vacations. So these places are full of different kind of beauty that is interesting. So, as we just said in the question, intriguingly different. That's the meaning of exotic. I hope you all got it right. 
And now we'll move on to talk about the third word for today, and that is complementary. And here you have to pay attention to the spelling of this word because just by changing one single letter, it will mean something completely different. Complementary is C O M P L E, not I E M E N T A R Y. This complementary, not the one with I, because that would mean something else. Anyway, let's take a look at how we use that in context, and then I'm going to ask you the question. We said Kuna people who learn the complex process from their mothers first stack anywhere from two to seven layers of different colored cloth. Then they cut designs into the top layer and sew the design's edges with complementary stitchery. So, what do you think? Something that is complementary can be best explained as what? As serving to complete? As confusing? As unattractive? Or as useless? Which one do you think is the answer? Think about it, and I'll be right back. Now, for those of you who thought serving to complete, you're absolutely right. But I will dive a little bit deeper in this word. It's not just serving to complete. Of course, it's complementary, so it completes things. But complementary things with an E, not an I, they're different from each other. But they make a good combination. So here, when we talk about complementary stitchery, the stitchery itself is different from the design, but they make a very good combination. So yes, it does serve to complete the design, but at the same time, it is different for a good reason, to make a good combination. That is complementary. We can use that to talk about food, to talk about designs like in here, or anything else, just to talk about this kind of contrast that you make, but at the same time, it's a beautiful contrast. So that was our word, complementary. And next, we're going to talk about a very beautiful word. It is paramount. P-A-R-A-M-O-U-N-T, paramount. Let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said the paramount theme represented in MOLA design is nature. The earliest examples were abstract interpretations of the texture of brain coral, but the designs have become increasingly complex, stylized images of animals and plants. So, the paramount theme represented in MOLA design is nature. What do we mean by that? Which words could best replace paramount in this example? Do you think we can replace it with uh, freed from an obligation, chief or major, passing away quickly or showing little preparation? Which do you think is the answer? Think about it and I'll be right back. Now, for those of you who thought chief or major is the answer, you're absolutely right. Something that is paramount or of paramount importance is more important than anything else, is the principal thing, is the prime thing, the first, the chief thing. That is the paramount theme. We're not just talking about one of the themes in MOLA design. No, it is the paramount theme. It's the most important theme. It's the prime theme represented in MOLA design, and that is nature. And that was our word paramount. And now let's move on and talk about the next word, stylized. Let's take a look. It came in the same context, but I will remind you with that. The paramount theme represented in MOLA design is nature. Well, we talked about paramount. The earliest examples were abstract interpretations of the texture of brain coral, but the designs have become increasingly complex, stylized images of animals and plants. Stylized images. What does that mean? Which words could best replace stylized in this context? Can we say instead represented in a way that does not reflect nature? Can we say stubbornly and recklessly willful? Can we say causing or showing joy? Or arousing strong dislike? What do you think the answer is? Think about it and I'll be right back. Now, this one is a little bit tough, I know. But for those of you who thought represented in a way that does not reflect nature is the right answer, you're absolutely right, because it is. Well, something that is stylized is shown or done in a way that is not natural in order to create an artistic effect. So it is not just about doing something that is not natural or showing something that is not natural. You do it on purpose because you want to create an artistic effect. 
So here, it's not that they can just reflect nature as it is in those molas. Not at all. They have the skill to do that, but they do that intentionally because they want to create those stylized, not exactly like nature, but only to create an artistic effect, like abstract or embroidered or fabricated or something like that. So that was our word stylized. I hope you like this word. It can be used in a lot of good places, especially in art. But anyway... That was our word. The next word is invest. And you might say that invest, yeah, we all know this word, but it is used in this context in a different layer of meaning. So first, let's take a look at how we used it in context. We said, although folk art experts have attempted to invest the patterns with religious symbolism, the designs are probably purely decorative. So here, what do we mean by invest in this context? It's not about the money, right? We're not talking about investing money in some project or something. It's different. And that's the question. Which words could best replace invest in this context? Can we replace it with act as a go-between? Remove extraneous matter from something? Endow with a quality? Or come quickly into view? Which one do you think is the right answer? Think about it, and I'll be right back. Now, for those of you who thought endow with a quality, you're absolutely right. If you say that someone or something is invested with a particular quality, you mean that they seem to have that quality. So why do we use that here? We said here that folk art experts tried to give the quality of religious symbolism to those patterns, but actually there's no religious symbolism in those patterns, most probably. They're just decorative. That's the meaning of invest in this context. So that's a new shade of meaning for the same word that you already know. And that's a good thing you learn in Word Power from English Plus Podcast. That's why you're here, right? And don't forget that you can practice all these things on the website. So don't miss out this opportunity. The link is right here in the show notes. Just click on it. You will go to my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com, and you will enjoy all those practice opportunities that I created for you for this episode in particular. Now let's move on and talk about the next word, exemplify. E-X-E-M-P-L-I-F-Y, exemplify. How do we use that in context? We said, the evolution of the mola is there to exemplify a necessary dichotomy for the kuna adopting new ways to survive in the modern world while at the same time keeping their culture intact. So, what do we mean by exemplify in this context? Which word or words could best replace exemplifies in this context? Can we replace exemplify with displays in order to impress others? With persists in a state of inactivity? With relies on for support? Or with illustrates by example? What do you think the answer is? Think about it and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought illustrates by example, you're absolutely right. That's the exact meaning of exemplify. If a person or thing exemplifies something such as a situation, quality, or class of things, they are a typical example of it. So it's like showing or representing or demonstrating, displaying as a good example of this group of things or class of things or a quality or something. That's the meaning of exemplify. I hope you add this to your active vocabulary bank, but that's not the last word. Within the same context, we talked about the next word that is dichotomy. D-I-C-H-O-T-O-M-Y. Dichotomy. Let me remind you with the context again. The evolution of the mola exemplifies a necessary dichotomy for the kuna adopting new ways to survive in the modern world while at the same time keeping their culture intact. So, what do we mean by dichotomy here? A dichotomy can best be explained as what? As two conflicting parts or opinions? As a tradition passed down through the generations? As two or more figures that make up a unit or design? Or as one of three major divisions? What do you think the answer is? Think about it, and I'll be right back. Now, for those of you who thought two conflicting parts or opinions is the right answer, you're absolutely right. That's the meaning of dichotomy. If there is a dichotomy between two things, 
there is a very great difference or opposition between them. So we're talking about division, separation, split. That's the meaning of dichotomy. And now we're left with two more words, pragmatic and replica. Let's go directly to pragmatic and then we will finish with replica. Pragmatic is spelled P-R-A-G-M-A-T-I-C, pragmatic. How do we use that in context? We said the Kuna women initially made their molas for pragmatic reasons, without a thought to selling them. So what do you think this pragmatic means? Which word could best replace pragmatic in this context? Can we replace it with interdependent, with practical, with charitable, or with damaging? What do you think the answer is? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought practical is the answer, you're absolutely right. A pragmatic way of dealing with something is based on practical considerations rather than theoretical ones. A pragmatic person deals with things in a practical way. And here we were talking about the Kuna women initially making their molas for pragmatic reasons. They didn't make them first just to sell them. They didn't have this idea. But when the opportunity presented itself and people started getting interested in buying those molas, of course they did. That was a good commercial opportunity. But first, they made their molas not because they were making things for a ritual or something or because they were actually making art. They were creating those molas for pragmatic reasons, but those molas turned out to be pieces of art, as we all see it this way, of all this exotic beauty. Remember, exotic, right? So that was the meaning of pragmatic, and now we're left with the last word for today's episode, and that is replica. R-E-P-L-I-C-A, replica. Let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said this dramatic, colorful needlework is found nowhere else in the world. And it is unlikely that replicas will ever be successfully made by machine because it is so intricately designed and created. And while machines might get there, they will never beat handiwork. But anyway, let's focus on replicas. So we said it is unlikely that replicas will ever be successfully made by machine. What do we mean by replica then? Replicas can best be explained as what? As openings in fabric, as multiple shadows, as earnest requests, or as copies or reproductions of originals. What do you think the answer is? Think about it and I'll be right back. Now, for those of you who thought copies or reproductions of originals, you're absolutely right, because that is the meaning of replicas. A replica of something such as a statue, building, or weapon is an accurate copy of it, but it's not the original. It is a replica, so it's so different. Now, sometimes they do that to trick or deceive people. They create some kind of art that is a replica of the original and they try to sell it as if it were the original or something like that. Or even, you know, just like with brands and stuff, when they make replicas that look the same, but they're not the same quality or they're not made by the same person, etc. So you get the idea of what replica means. And that's the important thing. And that brings me to the end of this episode where we talked about the Kuna creations and we talked about 10 words that you should add to your active vocabulary bank. We talked about denizen, exotic, complementary, paramount, stylized, invest, exemplify, dichotomy, pragmatic, and finally, replica. I hope you learned a lot in this episode and I hope you enjoyed the story I chose for today. Don't forget that you can practice what you learned on my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. The link is in the show notes. It will take you to the custom post I created for this episode, where you will find all the opportunities in the world to practice and make sure these words transform into your active vocabulary bank, your permanent active vocabulary bank, those words that you will never forget and you will use in your speaking and writing in the days to come. And of course, if you would like to support me, support this podcast and get all the benefits that come with it, you can become a patron on Patreon. The link is also in the show notes. You can go there and get all the benefits and support us to make sure the show goes on. With that being said, this is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.